Hello. How's everybody doing? Good. So the first thing I'm going to do is just uh, actually just show you my bio, and that way I don't have to talk about it. So <laughs> this is the class we're doing. And here's my bio, so I can watch that first. The thing that I hear about my pictures from past clients and other people who look at my stuff is that they're not overly glamorized. They look like themselves. My name's Rod Goodman. I'm a New York-based headshot photographer. I'm originally from Los Angeles, and I've been here since Valentine's Day of 2005. I have a wonderful photo studio. I'm on a park in 27th. Not anymore. I just moved. That's here just about all the time. My specialty is... Headshots for actors and corporate clients. Headshots is a very specific product, showing people as they are, but at the very best that they can be. Part of that comes from working with someone that you feel comfortable with, that you feel like you can come into a place and let your guard down and maybe make a fool of yourself a little bit sometimes. But I'll probably make a fool of myself first, so it's not that big of a deal. I truly do actually love what I do. I really enjoy the one-on-one -on -one aspect of working with people and to try to, you know, get the best out of people that I can. And it's a skill, and it's an art, and I'm really good at it, and I've been doing it a long time. And how I got into photography was very simple. I quit my job and bought a camera. That's, that's it. I quit my job and bought a camera. I was a mortgage broker. Uh, I was in the real estate business. It was all right, but I just wasn't happy, wasn't fulfilled. And I wanted to do something artistic with my life. I always liked looking at pictures. I never really, <laughs> I never really used a the camera. They always intimidated me. The 35 millimeter the f stops always intimidated me. So I just proceeded to learn how to use a camera. And in doing so, I got hooked up with a, a wonderful instructor who was very passionate about what he did. And one of the things he said to me was, to all of us in this little class, today is the day that you'll never see the world the same way today. And he was right, and, you know, and, and it's like all around us, the light, the lighting and everything, you know, if we didn't have light, we'd be walking around in darkness. So that's what photography is, painting with light. I went back to school and thought I'd be a photojournalist, and I was speaking with one of the photojournalists that was kind of a mentor of mine. We were really talking deep, you know, and, and he said his job consisted of 99% of the stuff he did was bad. It was tough, you know. 1% was great. Would you put your camera down and help somebody or would you shoot it? Now, I'd probably put my camera down. So, not a good photojournalist, but I did enjoy doing portraits and I always seemed to gravitate towards that. I was from LA and I was like, actors need headshots. <laughs> I could do that. It just clicked. It just felt right. I've been working on a project on uh, subway performers. It's called the Busker Project. A uh, busker is a term to perform publicly for donations. That's what it means. And I bring them up into my studio and we talk and I shoot them playing and then we talk some more and I shoot a portrait of them and do a little interview. And there's a common thread in that I'm doing what drives me, what my passion. Musicians and actors, they're doing what they do. They're driven by their passion. I'm able to mesh with these people really well because we're on the same wavelength. You're certainly more than welcome to call me. I like to do consultations. I think it's important for people to come and meet eye to eye. Rod Goodman photo. <laughs> That's it. So I did I, two things on that video. Um, one is that photojournalist I talked to said that 90% of the stuff that he did was tough, not, not uh, 99. <laughs> and then I just moved. I just moved from Park to uh, 29th Street, so I'm pretty excited about that. So those are the only two things that changed on the video. So anyway... I'm going to start off by telling you a little story about this picture. I took this photo in uh, 1995, and I was brand new to photography, and I just kind of stumbled into this situation where I was shooting these people. So this is Ricardo Montalban, and I, what's, what's incredible about, about this line of images is I'm going to show you is that this is when I really saw what headshots was about, like how, that it takes like it takes talent. There's a, a, an innate talent that you need to be able to, to have your picture taken. Um, he, he, Ricardo Montalban was really pr pretty old there, and he, he had like some, something with his legs was wrong. And he, he, if you look at him in his work, he always propped himself up. He had something was not right with his legs. And he was on a walker, but he was a very vain dude, so he wanted the walker like so far away from him that I had no chance of him 
getting shot with a walker. So he was standing there and he was in just pain. And this mask of pain would come over his face every now and then. And he would wait, he'd stop, and he would like shake it off. <sighs> you know, just really, he really like was going someplace. And then he would just go, boom. And that dude is in pain, but you, you could never tell by looking at that picture. And that's just what set me off on my journey of headshots, I think, is just these types of interactions and seeing the power of, what, of what's happening behind the camera, in front of the camera. So that's my, so <clears throat> I'm going to go through this because I still have to shoot and I have to retouch. So I'm going to kind of go fairly quick. Um, what makes a successful headshot? Does everybody know what a headshot is? Like everybody knows, yeah. Um, headshots are not portraits. They're not editorial shoots. They're, they're very specific. Whether you're shooting an actor or you're shooting a corporate person or whatever, a headshot is a very specific thing, I think. Um, what makes a successful headshot? Obviously, well, not obviously. Eye contact is very important. Um, shots looking off don't really work because I think the, the, there's weight in that eye contact. Um, relax muscles, facial, body, mind. What that means is, is the camera picks up everything. You could see so, uh, you, you could see people's tension. And part of a f being the photographer is to help guide people and, and be their ears and eyes for them, and like tell them when they have tension and help them deal with it and try to figure that out and get it, get rid of it because it really shows up in the pictures. <clears throat> um, subtext. You know, contrary to what people think sometimes when they come into my studio, it's not just standing there and smiling, okay? It's a lot of work. When uh, many times after a session, a client was going to be tired, and they're like, why? they're surprised at how tired they are, and it's because they had to do something. It's not just standing on a spot and looking in the camera and smiling. It, it, it takes work to get subtext, and that's what the photographer's job is to help them through that, you know? Um, and you know everybody has their own philosophies on on that and you know my my philosophy is that people are who they are and they just reveal themselves to me it's not my job to make somebody be something that they're not you know whether you're a corporate person or an actor it's still you know you can be a, a, a business person who's got an edge to him and he's a tough dude and that's going to probably show you know or you can be a soft guy and it's that's going to show so you know giving them a safe place to be who they are basically um, nondescript backgrounds, you know, um, we live in New York City, we can go shoot with anything in the background and get great, cool pictures, but headshots are about the person. If you, and that's why you'll hear like no jewelry and no, you know, pattern tops and really simple because generally speaking, whoever is looking at that headshot is looking at it for a second. You know, whether it's a person online looking at a company and they're looking at a profile, they're looking for a second. Casting person who's going through pictures, boom, boom, they're looking for a second, you know? So when you have a background or a cool top or whatever, and, and someone says, where was that shot? That's really cool. That's a fail. You got, they failed, you know, they didn't get a good headshot because you got to capture their attention in a second. So that's what a <coughs> nondescript background is. Um, layers and personality is, Pretty much like subtext, you know. Um, you know, layers in personality is we're we are all more than one thing. You know, I'm a son, and I'm a I'm I'm a friend, I'm a a lover, I'm a brother. You know, I'm all these things all in one, and we all are. You know, and we don't just we're not monolithic. We're a lot of things, and and that's what I feel. Layers in personality. It's it's. You know, anybody can smile, but when you when you look at the picture and you wonder what they're smiling about, that's then you're onto something. So, so moving right along. So the difference between a good headshot and a great one, a lot of times, is like a fraction. Like, it's ama it, it constantly amazes me how little someone has to do to really put out a lot. You know. Um, and, you know, our, our brains are like very powerful and we're always listening and smelling and hearing and thinking and, and you can't shut that off. So all those things going in and out of our heads kind of comes out, you know. And when you're there to capture that, when you look through the pictures, you'll see varying degrees of stuff, you know. And, and I'm going to show you right now. So 
the next uh, images I'm going to show you are straight out of my camera, no retouching, no adjusting, nothing. Just so I put that out there so nobody gets all crazy. So this, this is a girl I just shot, and I'm going to show you four pictures, okay? One, two, three, four. Those are all pretty close, right? But if you look at them really carefully, they're not. If you look really careful, one, two, three, four. Does anybody want to give me their opinion which they think is the best? One, two, three, four. <laughs> See, that's really cool because it's subjective. There's no right answer. <laughs> There's no right answer. So what I'm going to tell you is, is right is right for me, you know, for, for what I think. And I think number four is the one. And I'll tell you why. Because, so number one, this gets really nitpicky, but when you're, her mouth is squirrely, right? It's not settled. It's not relaxed. Her chin's a little too low. I like a low chin, but that's a little too contrived feeling to me. You know, that's better. That's actually really good, actually. Three is, my ch is, is like my alternate choice. It's really close. But I picked four because it's a little softer and it fits her personality of the type that she is because she's not necessarily this. She's more that. You know, it's softer, right? Does everybody see that it's softer? And her mouth is very relaxed and her eyes are very connected and she's got a lot, a lot going on and you can't really tell what she's thinking, but you can see that she's connected. Right? Does everybody see she's connected? Hello, people. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Wake up. <laughs> so, okay, so uh, is everybody with me on this one? Yeah. So far? Okay, good, good, cool. <laughs> yeah, got connected. Go on. Okay, so um, <laughs> the, the next few are really interesting because you can stop here and go, oh, that's a nice picture. But when she, when, when you, when I adjust her just a little bit, it just boom, it snaps, it pops, her eyes are connected, she's, her, her face is a nice shape. See, like just a little turn of the face and a little, and, and you know, part of it is it's really like kind of magic because you, know, you, you, you can't make that happen. It just happens, you know? She can't make that happen. It just happens. Same with this one, right? This is good, right? But when she strengthens up a little bit and sharpens up, boom, you know, it just looks so much better to, to me, you know? See? It's so, it's so, right, it's more interesting. It's so subtle, but everything about this process is subtle. Oh, okay, that's that. Um, so here's some just re retouching before and afters of some people, just to give you an idea of what it looks like raw versus what it looks like done. And you'll see that it's, there's not much that is done usually. It's just like turning lights on on the photo, you know what I mean? It's like, that's good, but that's a lot better. And you, she still has bags on her eyes and she has lines. She's a young girl, so, you know, granted. Um, same, same with her, you know, uh, just a little bit of uh, little Photoshop, nothing, cha not really changing anything on her face, just sharpening things up with layers and stuff like that. This is, a, okay, this one's good because everybody has, nobody has a symmetrical face. Everybody's got something going on with their face. It's just, we're human, that's how it is. Um, you know, this guy, obviously, he has a, his eye is, and he knows it, and he's fine with it, right? But I wanted to fix it a little bit to make it just a little bit better without really changing his face. So this is what I did. And you'll see, I took the, I took the, uh, I took the tension muscles, like those, those things off of his forehead, and I opened up his eye with Liquify, just like a little teeny bit. And then I go in and erase the eyeball so that so they, it doesn't get bigger with the, uh, with, the, with the liquid tool, Liquify tool. And that's it, boom, it's easy. And it's enough to, to get the point, of, you know, it's enough, but it's not too much. This is just like, aside from cleaning up the background, it's just contouring and getting rid of some little problems with her skin, but that really, that's about it. So it's really not much. It's, it's all in a lot of, of the Photoshop that's done is in, the la in, in, in uh, levels and, and curves and stuff. 
So this is a good one too, because she has bags in her eyes and everybody has bags under their eyes. And when you smile, it's an anatomical fact that you're gonna get bags under your eyes because your face moves up, your cheeks push up against, and your eyes get smaller and it creates those bags. And that's, it, that's just the way it is. And that's, you, nobody doesn't have that. Um, so it drives me crazy when I see people retouch their pictures where they just smooth it out, you know? It just drives me crazy because they look like an alien. Mm -hmm. So there's a better way around that and that's just to lighten it up a little bit, you know? So she's definitely got bags there. They are, that is undeniably there, you know? But they're just heavier there. And a lot of times this process that we do now is um, we're shooting on HD pictures and HD cameras and HD stands for High definition. So high definition, you're, you know, she may not, she probably looks more like that in person than that because it's HD and it's going to make the shadows deeper and darker. So, you know, softening up is kind of fair in my eye. Um, and this girl, just a little bit of the stray hairs, a little cropping and a little, uh, a little brightness to her face. And that's it. Really simple. Um, this guy too, this is, this was, the, you can't tell cause I didn't, I, but this is a very flat, uh, um, version. This is right out of my camera. But when I, when I changed the levels on it, he's hit the, the pigment under his eyes got really dark. So I had to deal with that right there, but it's still there. You can see it. It's still there, but it's just lightened up a lot. So, you know, the whole idea with retouching is that you don't want to go overboard. And that is that. Now we're going to shoot. The whole idea of headshots is to make trust with you, you know, have them feel comfortable with you. Do you feel comfortable yet? <laughs> <laughs> she looks very comfortable. I'm very excited. <laughs> so all you need to do is look right there and have a good thought in your head, okay? And we'll, we'll, we'll get there. Can I turn this on? I want to get in there. Okay, my dear, are you ready? You look ready. Can I smile? No. Not if you don't want to. <laughs> Never smile. <laughs> well, it's better than making you cry. Do, do me a favor. Do me a favor. Go like this. Blow up, go. <laughs> One more time, do that again. No. <laughs> <laughs> Turn your nose a little bit over this way. That's good. You don't look tense or uptight at all. You look very relaxed. Are you good? I'm very good actor. <laughs> That's good. That's great. Oh, you're a good, you listened very well, too. You turned your head back the way I told you. <laughs> you got a little tension in your mouth. You have a little tension in your mouth. Stretch your mouth. I'm hungry. Well, <laughs> everybody's hungry when they shoot. Hey, I got a little tip for you. So when you're, yes, yeah, when you're standing, don't put your weight on your back foot. So a lot of times people stand like this, right? And they're on their back foot. And what happens is it changes the shape of their face because they go back like this, you know? So if they come forward, they're, it's, it's, yeah, you could, you want to, okay, you want to, all right, you want smarty pants? All right, smarty <laughs> pants. Here, stand right there, relax. I want you to do two things for me, okay? I want you to go like that and go like that. See that move? <laughs> stay out, stay out. Yeah, that's good. Do you feel, do you feel weird? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's very nice. <laughs> Just relax. Look right at me, hon. Shoshana, what? you're not looking. There you go. <laughs> you, went to, you went to sleep on me. I'm going to try. Well, I can't, uh, I can't actually. Well, I can't show you guys. That's right. <laughs> Yet. Just relax. Go blow again. Blow. Go ahead. That works too.
sticking your tongue out works. Because we have a lot of muscles in our face, you know, and we get really tense. And people get tense when they're having their picture taken. So a lot of times I'll ask them to do something like that, like, like that. And, and it's a good visual test, because if you can't do that, your mouth's tight, right? If you, if you try to do it, it's, your mouth is tight. So you should be able to go, and if you are, your muscles are relaxed. So there. <laughs> <laughs> And do me a favor now, will you? Turn a little bit this way. That's good. No, too much. That's good. Make sure you pull your shoulders back. Really come at me a little bit. See how I'm coming at you? No, not down. Out. I know it's weird. <laughs> See, no, okay, normally, normally I would take the time and show the client what I'm doing, right? So I would show her what it looks like when the way she stands on her back foot, and then I would correct the person and show them on my camera, and that really builds trust when they see, so you don't trust me. <laughs> it builds trust when you get to show somebody what you're doing, and they go, oh, yeah, I look really good. Okay, yeah, I'm in it. I'm down. You. Yeah, but I know. <laughs> Roll your shoulders back a little bit. Good. You look good. You look very confident. See, your true colors always come out. <laughs> your mouth's tight. Don't be angry at me. I'm just telling like I see it, honey. <laughs> That's great. Awesome. That's great. Let's see. How are we doing? I don't want to go too far. So turn. You know what? Try, try the other way. That's good. Too much. That's good. <laughs> You're a pro now. Check you out. <laughs> hey, do me a favor. Straighten your head a little bit. Like, it's tilted that way. Wait, wait. Start over again. <laughs> there you go. No, turn straight on at me. No, turn straight on. I changed my mind. Sometimes you got to know when to say no, people. And that was it. You got the power, Shoshana. Look at you, girl. <laughs> okay, two things. Turn your nose a little to the light. That's good. And Shoshana. Yeah. <laughs> How you doing? I'm great. That's good. <laughs> Below again. I see tension. I'm, I call them like I see them, honey. See? See the tension? See? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you look great. You're doing good. Wait till we throw you up there. You should probably leave. <laughs> when we get you up there, you should probably leave. <laughs> You're tough. <laughs> there you go. You relax. See that? Did you see that? Turn your nose a little bit over. That's oop, too much. Ooh, you have nice bone structure. Nice bone structure, Mama La. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, you're stingy. Look at you. <laughs> oh, she's a. <laughs> you're surrounded. <laughs> That's great. Okay, let's see if we got enough to go for them. So that's basically what I do, you know. It's, there's no formula. Everybody's different. Um, I never approach the same, per, d different people the same way because everybody requires different stuff, you know. I mean, I do what I do, but I relate to everybody. I adapt my, how I relate to the person that's in front of me, you know. And that's, I think, um, a really powerful tool to have as a photographer that does this especially, you know. So what I would normally do when I open up a picture is set the, uh, um, in, in camera raw, which I just did, I set my warmth to like, uh, I mean, my uh, temperature to like 5100 um, and put a little magenta in there because I find that Canon cameras need that. So the next thing I'd normally do 
is I look at the image and I kind of figure out what I need to do. So um, I would, you got good skin, Shoshana. Okay. All right. So the first thing, does everybody know Photoshop basically like lay, uh, how to use layers and layer masks and all that stuff? Yeah? Yeah, good. Okay. Because that's basically what's, what's happening. Okay, so the first thing I would normally do is open up a... Now, there's, with Photoshop, there's always like a million ways to do one thing. So I might do something one way and some, you know, you might do it another, but it's pretty much going to get to the same place. Like, for instance, I use levels more than I use curves. I know some people like curves. I like levels, um, except for, I use curves for like two things. But um, I, mainly I use uh, levels. What are the two things for curves? I'm gonna, actually, I'm gonna show you right now because she could use that and that's a good way to do it. So, I found, oh, I gotta figure out how to do this talking. <laughs> curves. So her face is over, well, actually, it's not that bad. But, okay, I'm gonna show you a way. So, I'm gonna show you a way of darkening someone's face um, and their, their skin in a more complex way than just shoving the slider over, okay? So I open up a curves layer and I grab it in the middle and I go all the way down, all the way down. Come on. There you go. Perfect. Well, I'm done. Wrap it up. Okay, then... I go to apply image. Does everybody know what apply image is? This is like world changing. This is like earth shattering right here. Okay. And it's usually the default settings are correct, which is merged and, and uh, multiply. And then there's an invert and a non-invert. So what I'm gonna do is I pulled my, le my uh, curves la lever all the way down to really darken her up and then I do, I do two. I do one without inverted. Stay with me, people. It'll start to make sense. And then I do one, another one. Apply image. And I invert that one. And then I hold down the Apple key and put them together and I make a, a group and then I go back. Oops. And I look at it. Oops. Let me get that out of the way. There we go. And then I turn each one off and on to see what it does. I'll pick one. I'll lower the opacity a great deal because she doesn't need a lot of this. And I'll lower the opacity on this. And you see what's going on, right? So it's starting to darken up, but it's not like getting weird from using the sliders when, you, on your, when you're on levels and you push it all the way from the, it's, it just, this is like, by applying image, you're going in I, I wish I could answer exactly what it's doing, but it's making, if you noticed, it's, if you notice, it's making, oh, let me open that up so you can see. By doing apply, whoops. Open up. There you go. By doing apply image, it's making a very complex layer mask. See that? So it's loading the highlights and then the darks, right? So it's, do, it's, it's like making a really complex layer mask when you apply an image. And it gives you a lot more uh, flexibility when you're, when you're doing stuff like this. So basically, I would just do this until it looks pretty good. And and then I might go in and put in a layer mask and the brush. I should do that. 
Actually, no. I kind of like that. Uh, I'll go. So then I might layer, the, change the opacity on the on the grouped on the grouped thing. I might lower the opacity on that. So, I mean, right there, you can see I I brought the levels down without like killing the photo by applying the image. So that's a, a really, that's the hot tip for today, guys and girls. The next thing I'm going to do is pick a new layer. Now, um, I'm going to show you guys how to deal with bags under the eyes, OK? And it's not with a healing brush. It's a, a different way. Because typically, someone might, you might, I used to do it too, and sometimes I still do. I'll go in with a healing brush and fix, you know, fix under here um, and then change the opacity. But I discovered this other cool way. I'm going to show you guys how, how it works. But before I do that, I might take a, I might take a healing brush. And clean up some things. Oops, wait. Uh, current layer. Current below. Okay, that should do it. There we go. Okay. And I might just clean up a few things that I see. This is like watching paint dry, isn't it? <laughs> All right, that's not that's that's pretty good. All right, now let me go to my. Okay, so now I picked another layer, and now I'm going to do a few things. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lighten the bags under her eyes without taking them away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a paintbrush and I'm going to sample a light part of her skin right there. What am I at here? Hardness, good, good, OK, good. Oops. So I picked a light part of the skin. And does everybody know about flow and opacity? The difference? There's a difference. Yeah. Flow, it just, it's like a paintbrush. It keeps, you can keep adding to it, you know? Um, opacity is just opacity. And then I'm going to go down. I use 5% I on my brush almost always. And then I'm going to go to the blending mode, and I'm going to go to light and color. And then I'm just going to go like this. And lighten that up. And maybe along the bridge of the nose a little bit. And carry it down her cheek a little. Open that up a little. Okay, now that is pretty heavy-handed, huh? Yep, it sure is. So what you can do is, get ready, kids. <laughs> I just learned this like about a year ago. It's incredible. So if you double tap your, the layer that you want, it opens up this, this box that you guys are pretty familiar with, I'm sure. Now there's these sliders down here. Does everybody know what these are? Does, every, does, every, does anybody know how to split these? And what did you do? You're, you should get, get up here. You do this. No. Why does it do that? Tell no, me why. <laughs> yeah, either am I. <laughs> so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you. Uh, I'm taking the underlying layer. Please don't ask me why, because I, don't, I can't answer why this works. I don't know. But I'm gonna, just going to show you, and it's really cool. Okay. So the underlying layer. And if you hold the Option key, when you don't hold the Option key, see, it, it moves, right? And you can see it's small. That's really small. Shoot. You can kind of see, or not. Yeah, see how it changes it, right? Now I'm going to split it. There, I just split it by holding the Option key down and pulling it apart. Now watch. I'm going to take one of them and slide it all the way over there. Look what that just did, people. You see that? Now I'm going to take the other one. See? See what it's doing? See that? So now I'll go here like this. 
okay. Do you see the difference, people? You see that? What that did is by, by splitting that slider, it's like, it's like, it's like, I don't know what, I don't know why, but you can see the paint goes, the paint blends into the skin better. I, I, I don't know why, but it works. And it's just an incredible way of doing it because that's about as much as I would want to do on her, you know? That's it. And you can see what it did. It opened her face up quite a bit. Here. Oops. So just the few things that we did right here. You can see. And if it's not, actually, you know what? Let's do it more. That's not enough. Oh. That's weird. It went away. Yeah, that, that's weird. That just went away. Huh. Let me do that again. And split that. There we go. Okay. Now, the next thing I would probably do is look around and see if I need to clean anything up. Well, actually, what I would do... I'm just going to fix a little bit right around here. And with the healing brush, you can toggle back between normal and replace, and you could even toggle between normal and spot healing, um, all in the same layer. You don't have to create new layers. And that's what I would basically do, is just look around and fix what I don't like and keep what I think should be there. Like, you know, she has um, things on her face that I'm not gonna take off, because I know that they're there all the time. Um, another thing that I like to do is I'm going to show you, does everybody know how to make a stamp visible layer and what that is? So stamp visible is you can, when you have layers, sometimes you want to do something globally, um, which you need to recreate the, the background layer, right? So you can, you can, wherever you're at, you can do a stamp visible layer and it ma basically makes a snapshot of everything below it and puts it on top. And how you do that is you hold Command, Option, Shift, E. Command, <laughs> Apple, Option, Shift, E. And you get a, a, vi a visible layer. So now what I, what I would do normally is, uh, let me show you, well, she doesn't really need much. <laughs> I have other pictures if I need to pull them out. Um, one of the last things that I, that I normally do to a photo is I'll do a, 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 a visible layer, and I will go Command-Shift-U, and I'll unsaturate it, okay? And then I will go to a soft light and pick soft light. And then I will bring the opacity down to 20. And I like that. I like this because you can do a, you can do a uh, stamp visible layer and you, you don't have to unsaturate. You could just do a soft light layer. But for my eye, it's too warm. It makes it too warm. So by doing this process, process it kind of sucks the red out. And I find that Canon has a lot of red in there. So this, pro this last step for me always really works good because it kind of sucks a little bit of the red out. And you can kind of see it if you look carefully. See? You see how it darkens it a little bit and it just sucks some of that red out. 
So that's one of the last things that I do to a photo before it's done. Um, let me show you also how to, does everybody know how to sharpen a photo? Yeah, how do you sharpen a photo? I like the little sharpie thing, and then I move it to the right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna show you a better way. <laughs> so there's uh, unsharp mask, right? Um, that's not good. That, to me, to my eye, that's not a good way to sharpen. Um, I found a better way to sharpen using high pass. Um, so what I would do is, I would do a stamp visible layer. There we go. And then I would go Command, Shift, Unsaturate. And I'll go back to that soft light layer. Keep it at 100%. And then I'm going to go to... We know where that is. Other, it's in high pass, right? Now, that's a good way to sharpen. 10's pretty high. So you can see, well, it's hard to do before and after, but that's a little high. The, um, the cool thing with the, with the high pass is, for the right client, you can pump it all the way up and it, that, that works really good with like, guy, like men who want to look rough, who want to be rough. You know, they don't want to be smooth and clean, but they want to be rough. And that, so that's a really good way to do that. And then you just go in and change, you know, uh, uh, probably do, I would do this, and then I would do um, the curves to darken up her, his skin if it was a guy. So I would pump the high pass all the way up. But she's a girl, so we want to go... Honestly, a girl, I wouldn't sharpen it at all, but I'm just showing you guys how to sharpen a little bit, which is better than the unsharp mask. And there you go. And see, in my eye, it's a lot more, it's a, it's a lot cleaner than the unsharp mask. It seems like it just, unsharp mask just like takes the pixels and makes them pointy. I don't know. And this doesn't. So. So, let's see here. Let me show you. Uh, there's other things I want to show you, but she doesn't have the... Hmm. Okay. Shoshana's in good shape, people. I'm going to open up another picture. So, I'm going to show you guys how to take red out of the skin. Okay? This is really... This is a good one. Um, so, this guy, as you can see... Well... God, that's so cracked. You can see he's got like red, you know, and a lot of people have red. And how do you get rid of red, you know? It's, it, it, it can be tricky because um, you got to get into layer masks and it's, it's so th there's a really cool way to get rid of the red that I'm going to show you right now, shall we? So what I do is I would take a hue and saturation la layer, okay? Hue and saturation. And then I would go over to the master and go to the red channel, okay? Then I would take the saturation and pump it all the way up. What this does, it allows me to see where that red is, okay? That's all red. Now, there's this slider down here. And if you pull this thing around, you'll see that it goes away, right? You see that, people? So if I, if I set this to where I think I want to affect the red that it's that I that it's see like there's more red in his face than I saw than than I thought. It's all here and it's under here. It's, there's a lot of red. So by pumping the saturation up, you're just making it visible. It's not nothing more than just a visual aid for you, you know. So I can see what I'm doing. So I would get it to where pull that slider and if you want it you can go on the outside and pull these and narrow up the scope of it a little bit. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then I would go back to zero on my saturation so so now I don't see that visual marker of the red. And I would turn the green up a little bit. See, I'm going to do it a lot. See that? See, it's just affecting certain parts of the picture. You see that? It's pretty cool. Obviously, that's too much, but I just want you guys to see what it's doing. You see how little it's just like dealing with around here and his lips and around. It's actually not a lot. Let me open that up a little bit. There we go. And 
and I would just do it until it looks good. And I think that's pretty good right there. Yep, you see the, oh, that's a little too much. And then you gotta go in, because you don't want them to have green lips, so you gotta go in there and paint it back. Oops, I'm at five. <laughs> and there you go. And there, you see that? It's not per it's a little too green right now, I can see. But you get the point, right? It's a pretty cool that's a pretty cool technique. Thank you very much. It's very good. Okay. <laughs> what I this is a raw image, so what I what I would do is I start with a levels and I would um, change what I want to change globally. And I do that a lot by using just the histogram, right? We could watch the histogram and see what's going on, right? So we need, we need to pump that up a little bit. So I'm going to do like global things that for the whole picture, not just for specific parts. I'm not going to do anything to that part, just that part. So that's the first part I would do is globally. Then I would go in and do another one and start to be more specific. I might create. So I just I just went Command I and inverted the the layer mask so it's black. So now I want to paint white on there to expose what I'm going to change. So I'm going to do simply. I'm going to paint his face because it's underexposed. So now I made a layer mask of just his face, and you can see it's, it, needs, it needs some exposure, right? And then I might go in and it, see it's red. So I'm going to go in the red channel and go on the output side and knock that down. And by doing that, by going to the red and, and, taking, and using this, it's taking the red out of the shadows. Of, of the image. So that's what I just did. Then I'm going to show you guys. OK, now there's also another way to pull red out very quick, and that is with your curves. You open up the curves. You can take the, oh, this is different. Oh, there it is. Wait. There it is. And you can take this little finger guy and go to the red channel and go to the area that you want to reduce and just go, Roop, and there you go. Look at that. That's pretty cool. So that's just using the finger and going to the channel that you want to change, going to the area that you want to change, and just dragging up or down. I can go, see? So that's about. That's about it right there. See, so you see it took a lot of that red out. See that? Oops, oh, it's top. Oh, I see. Okay, there we go. There we go. So you can see that sucked a lot of the red out. Now I will. I'm going to deal with some of that pigment under his eyes. So I'm going to take a brush and I'm going to go to the flow to 5%. And same technique, I'm just going to take like a light part of his skin and just kind of paint it. Oop, that's too light. Oop, 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 oop. <coughs> And then I'm just going to paint it out a little bit around the bridge of his nose. There you go. And then I'll double click. I'll go to the underlying layer and zip that all the way over there. And pull that until it looks pretty good. See that? 
it's real subtle, but it sucked that, that pi dark pigment out, and it's, but it still left it. It like just reduces it. It's a really cool technique, that l l splitting the, lev l the layer like that. Whoops. Then, for this guy, what I would probably do, now that I know to touch that, boom. Where's the curves? Okay. All right, let's do it that way. There we go. And now I'm going to do that, this again, this technique with this guy, because he really needs it. Okay, I'm going to finish up. And this technique, this one, you can, you can keep building and building and building. You can do like 10 of them, you know, and do minute uh, changes on each one and really build up the texture on their, like change the whole tone of the picture. Um, it's kind of like a technique I found out that like, fashion people use. I don't do fr like frequency separation and stuff like that. It's too, it's too much. It's too, too heavy handed for what I do. One more, and get that over here, and inver uninvert it, right? And then we'll stack them, boom, and change the opacity until it looks pretty good. Okay, and then, so that actually looks pretty good to me. Um, now, you might, like it's not, it's not doing this now, but a lot of times hair will block up and be black, and there's a really cool way to deal with that, and I'm gonna show you. So, stamp visible layer, Right there, and then we're gonna do. We're not. We're gonna go over to adjustments, and we're gonna go to shadow shadows and highlights. I ne I very rarely use this this panel, but the shadow and highlights is actually pretty cool. And I go to show more options, and I go to about twenty and twenty. And that's pretty good. And what that does is, you can see, it affects just by setting it in the right way, it doesn't affect anything but the really dark parts, like his shirt and his hair. So that's obviously too much. So then I'll just go down like that. And see what that did to his hair? I would, book, and I'll actually, you know what? Let me. Um, let me just do one thing that bothers me, and that is paint back his shirt because it's too it's too faded. Okay, and there you go. So that is before and after. I mean, it's really quick. It's really down and dirty, but I think you guys get the idea of 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 what happened, right? right? Yeah, okay, good. All right, cool. Tell him to put chapstick on. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I would just... On that one. <laughs> nope. How would you fix it? I would go... It's, t you know, it's, it's tedious, you know, but you just go... I would go in, and you can use the spot healing brush on this kind of thing. So, sometimes spot healing is weird because it choose... You, you got you to gotta see... The spot healing, you don't have to choose a source, you know? It just chooses it for you. Okay, and I don't like that, so I'm going to go to spot healing. Or, or not spot healing, regular healing. And I would just simply go in there and take them out. <laughs> That's what I would do. 
And I don't know if you guys use Wacom tablet, but it's, it's life changing. Once you use it, you'll never go back because it's pressure sensitive. So depending on how hard you push, it does different things. So it really acts like when you have it on, brush, on a paintbrush, it acts like a paintbrush. And you can see when you, you know, you, you just kind of get, do this really fast. And then when I get to the to edges like this, I get tricky. And I go right on their mouth and I line it up and there. Because sometimes it messes up the, uh, like the healing brush is weird. Sometimes when you choose an area, it like bleeds through to, uh, it's weird. So that's, that's it. That's what I would do. So that's what I did just there in a, a minute, see? in a minute. And then, um, yeah, so you could see right there that it, it took care of that pretty well. The headshot has a very specific purpose, you know, and it's kind of like it's, it's someone's calling card. You know, that's a portrait is to hang on the wall and to admire and to look, you know, a headshot is very utilitarian, you know, it's no hands, it's no stuff, you know what I mean? Um, it's really bare bones, you know, and because you just want, you want the vibe of the person. I'm very big on the vibe, on someone's vibe and, and having it come out of them, you know? Um, so to me, that's what a headshot is. A portrait is a little more like a pretty picture, you know, because sometimes people, you know, they have to be honest with themselves and they, you know, then they see themselves in a way on a photo and they're like, let me back up. Many times an agent will pick a photo for their client and the client will be like, I don't know why the agent picked this. I hate that photo. But there's a reason they picked it because it's honest. Now the, the client may not be comfortable looking at, some, at themselves in such an honest way like in a full smile and where they didn't fake their smile, where it was real. And, you know, a smile is like the worst thing we could do to our face. You know, if we were like an alien, you come down and an alien comes down and goes, I'm like, what's that person doing? That's ugly. They're smiling, you know? We, we know a smile is beautiful because we have, the, we have the emotions to back it up. We understand what that smile means, you know? But re technically, smile, you know, you're pushing your cheeks up. You know, it's not very attractive, you know? But what makes it attractive is when it's, when it's genuine and you feel something from looking at that, you know? So sometimes people aren't comfortable seeing themselves in that way. So they may not be comfortable with what they see, but, but, the, but it's honest. And that's what a headshot is. It's got to be honest because casting people are not stupid, you know? They see pictures all the time. They know when something's been retouched too much. They know when stuff's been done, you know? Um, they know when someone's smile is fake, you know? So it needs to be really genuine. Thanks so much for letting me fumble through this. It's an experiment we did, and we'll see how it went. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, b &H has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help.